Okay, so in this video we're going to be looking at an app called Go Button. Um, it's primarily for use within the kind of theatre realm and like live live performance. However, it's actually a really really useful tool for working within a classroom setting or for kind of workshops. Um, it's basically a an audio file queuing app. Um, you know, you can kind of assign your audio files lots of different functions, like whether it be looping or playing simultaneously with other files. Um, you can kind of get them to trigger other audio files, um, effectively creating like this whole timeline sequence of sound events. Um, but I found it's been really, really good for working with with young folk when it comes to trying to set like an environmental scene for them to play music over, or we can kind of incorporate um, recordings that we may have done on different apps, whether it be GarageBand or Thumb Jam, or um, you know even using apps like Audio Share, you can kind of. Um, transfer your audio files over onto it. Um, anyway, I'm going to open it up just now. So it's this wee one down at the bottom with the yellow, green and red um, circles on it. So um, you can get it as a kind of free version. Um, it basically does everything that the the paid for version does apart from allowing you to save more than one show at a time. So obviously it's a bit of a a downer if you're trying to do lots of different things, but um, you can still do loads of really, really cool stuff with it. Um, so I've set up on this just a kind of quick example um, show for you um, that kind of perhaps will give you an idea of how I would maybe use it in a classroom setting or, you know, a workshop setting. So if we go into the show just now, you can see on the right hand side um, we have some audio cues in this wee bit. I'm sliding up and down just now. Um, so these are all audio files that I've imported. Um, some of you might recognise them, but I've kind of just grabbed them quickly from some of the kind of Apple loops within kind of Logic. Um, obviously, you can use your own recordings for this, um, and I would kind of recommend you do that because you know you can get some real gold from the folk that you're kind of working with. Um, one of the beauties about it is that you can actually edit the audio files within the app so you don't have to be too precious about how they are when they go in. So these are the the audio cues that are our main cues. Oh, just played that by mistake there. Um, on the bottom we have these other audio cues, these are what we call hits. So these can kind of happen at any time. Um, whereas these cues that I've put up here, I've run them in a very specific kind of order and you can get some of them to auto follow into other ones or you'll get them to loop or you can, when you move on to that cue, it will fade out previous ones. I mean, you can also assign um, functions like that to the hit buttons as well, but they're not quite as, um, you, you can't do quite as much with the hits as you can with a straight up cue. Anyway, I'll go back to the beginning and, and I'll play you this sound environment. I've kind of created a couple of different kind of spaces um, and various kind of transitions in between them that I hope would kind of give you an opportunity to try and explore some different sounds within it, whether it be with real instruments, like acoustic instruments, or, you know, with other, with other, um, you know, electronic instruments. Um, so, anyway, I'll start. So, to begin with... I've kind of created this garden atmosphere, like a nice calming kind of thing to kick us off with. So, um, you know, we can maybe bring in some of the birds. Um, but during this, you could almost like as if you were using um, sound beam and various kind of switches and buttons. 
um, you could get the folk you're working with to kind of trigger the different samples with the hits at the bottom. So, for example, there's a bowl, various one of the tuned ones that I've done, and another one. These can just cue at any kind of point. Um, chimes here so these are just you can kind of see that these things are just doing their stuff they're looping away in the background um, and it just kind of gives you an opportunity to kind of have a kind of bedding to kind of work with um, so for whatever reason you might want to explore this kind of sound environment with lots of different sounds um, you know obviously I've just got these bowls down here at the bottom but as I said, you could use whatever sound you kind of want, whether it be a sample of an instrument that you've been working with with somebody, or it might be a little loop, or it might be, you know, it might be anything. But um, what's great is you have the opportunity to kind of input it in here, and it can be really accessible, and you can you can kind of bring it bring it in, bring it out, or you can get it to um, to trigger other sounds as well. So. In the kind of context of me doing a workshop, I would maybe set up this kind of environment and really explore um, where we could kind of go with it, you know, turn taking or you know, calling kind of response or um, getting a chance to kind of bring in um, some little musical motifs or something. Um, but we may also want to have, say, a different kind of section. So what I've done here is I've created this other section here so you can hopefully be able to hear the rain coming in and I've told it to fade out all these other um, sounds so you'll, if you look up you'll see that these other audio files have stopped playing so it's very seamless, nice and easy We'll bring in a wee bit more rain. Um, I've kind of found that working with kids especially, they love a storm. It gives you a good chance to make a racket with whatever instruments you've got. So at the moment I'm just using these kind of cues to layer up this new kind of sound environment. Um, I've been doing a lot of work with birds at the moment, so I kind of tend to bring a lot of my own field recordings into the work that I do with the, with the, the kids at school. Um, and it's a great chance for me to talk about what I do and get them interested in it as well. So. Um, And here I'm just layering new wee bits over the top, you know. And we can always go back to adding in our other hits at the bottom if we want. Um, stick that bow one down there. Um, and again, if we feel like we've kind of got to a point with whatever kind of environment, you can set up next cue to move you on to the next bit. I mean here I put in a big thunderclap and you can see underneath it says to stop others so it's fading those other things out just now and then we can move into a new section maybe a new kind of key centre or something like that. Um, I was doing a project with folk that involved looking at kind of harmonic series and waveforms and stuff so um, these are some samples I have left over from that that I've kind of inputted into it um, and again I've set these up so they're just going to loop this top one, this um, Q number 10 A155 hertz once it gets to the end there it's going to ping back and start the loop once again so again you can kind of layer up these kind of harmonic worlds, you know, wang a 
few other ones in on the top there. Um, on the bottom for the hits as well, when you're editing them, you can actually you can kind of change the colours of them. Unfortunately, we don't have all the colours for figure notes, which is a bit of a shame. But I've kind of done a few of them here. Um, you know, with our I'll play that there. This is a reversed bell sample that I've used in the past. It's quite a long file, so um, it will run for a wee while. Um, I'll maybe bring these other hits in on the top. particular kind of um, sample that you've kind of worked with that, um, you can see there that actually those bell samples are pretty loud so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I've made this wee button down here that purple one see to fade and stop the hits so hopefully these cues up here will keep running whereas these hits down the bottom should fade out. Okay, see, sort of stop there, great. We'll add another wee bit of that in there. We've got this nice wee vinyl static loop that we've used, but this could be any kind of little wee percussion loop that you've made. Um, stick some sinister kind of accents in there. Get somebody to trigger a bowl again. Okay, so I've made this other wee button down the bottom to fade and stop cues and hits, so I've just triggered that just now, so we'll bring the piece to an end. There are loads and loads of videos online um, with much more in-depth tutorials as to how to create a show and the more um, advanced kind of features of the app. Um, there is possibilities for using MIDI switches and external switches and triggers for this, which I've not had a chance to explore myself, but um, it's definitely something I'm kind of looking into doing because um, as a program for playback, I really, really, I like the layout. I like the way it kind of works. It kind of seems very logical to me. Um, but yeah, being able to kind of use it with physical switches as well, I think, um, is a really cool thing. So hopefully that gives you a wee idea of how you could maybe use go bat go button in your um in your own practice in the classroom or in a workshop environment. Um I've certainly found it to be a really, really useful tool. Um and it I think being able to kind of react responsively to um to an environment it's it's a really really great thing to be able to kind of have a bank of stuff that you can kind of pull on um and kind of react to in the moment i think is a really good thing